So you want to filter your products on your collection page. There's a bunch of apps out there, but they are slow to load, create a page flicker, and charge you a monthly fee. In the last video, we looked at how to add collection filtering with the native Shopify solution. If you missed it, you can check it out with the link in the description below. But today, we're going to look at a custom option. It's a bit more specific of a use case, but I think it looks better. So if it fits for the way you want to organize your products, then it might be a great addition to your store. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so as a reminder, um, in our previous video, we added this filter, um, collection filter, uh, using the Shopify search and discovery app. And so that's what that looks like. Um, and if we go to our mobile version, you can see here um, that it creates this little menu uh, option that uh, comes out like a drawer. And you know, I, I think it works for the majority of you. Uh, but what we're going to look at today is um, what Obvi does here. So Obvi, they have uh, this filter here where um, it has these different options that kind of pop out like this. Uh, and it's just kind of like this big button um, that just has a different style to it. Whereas here, it just kind of looks like normal text. Here, it's uh, just has a different feel to it. Um, and so we're going to try to model off of this. You can see here, it's, it's just a... A few links here, so the the filtering options are a little bit more simple, um, but uh, I like the way it looks. So let's let's implement something like it. All right. So what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, come over to our themes area. So if we come out here and then customize, then we can go to our collections area. And then go to the product grid. And we're actually just going to turn off the filtering right now. So right now we've got our, our filters on the left side here. We're just going to take that out. And we're also going to take out the sorting. We're just going to remove that and save. OK, and then now we can edit the code. So um, as always, before you edit any code, uh, make sure to make a copy of it. I've already done that, so I'm just going to go ahead and edit code. And then, so now once we're in here, we're going to um, create a new snippet. And we're going to call it uh, Collection Filters Custom. Okay, and then we're just going to paste that in right there and save. So before I move on, there's uh, a section here where we can actually put an image. Um, so we'll come back to this a little bit later, uh, but this needs to be updated. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, go into the main collection product grid. And we're going to search for uh, the word paginate uh, right there. And so um, this is how the current filtering kind of helps create the pages on the, your collection page. Um, and we're just going to stick our code right above that line right there. And so we're going to render the liquid file we just created. OK, and we're going to save that. And then um, we can actually, we can just refresh and see what that looks like. OK, so you can already see here that we've got these new menus here. So themes, and it says clothing, product types, all types. So the product types are going to pull from the product types in this collection. And then the themes is going to be a list of collections that we're going to have to add into a meta field or, or meta object, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and then there's sort of this blank space here, which is where the image should go. So we're going to make those updates. Um, so let's start off with uh, the image. And so um, in here, I've actually already uploaded this icon, filter menu icon. So it just kind of looks like this. 
And we're just going to copy that link. And we're going to come back to our code. And we're going to paste that link right here. And save. And so if we refresh again, we're going to see it pop up right there. So now we've got that little filter icon there, um, which looks kind of like those three lines here, right? So that's what that does there. And so we can filter, go to long sleeves, and uh, we'll just see the long sleeves. Um, or if we go to all types, we'll see all of our products again. Now, if we click on the themes area, nothing's going to happen. Um, so we actually have to set up a meta object for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our settings and then custom data um, and meta objects. And so we're going to create a meta object with the name uh, collection filter list. And just as a note, all the names that I'm using here, um, just use them exactly as I've typed them because uh, the code is actually hard coding, looking for the uh, the handles that are being created with these titles. So if you want to use a different name, you can just make sure that the code matches. OK, so collection filter list, we're going to add a field. It's going to be a single line text. And we're going to call this name. And then we're going to add another one. We're going to go to uh, collections. And then do it's going to be a list of collections. And we're going to call this list. Okay, And we'll save that. And then we're going to come back out and go to our meta objects, add an entry with this new meta object that we created, collection filter list. And we're going to call this themes. So again, the name here is important. Um, it's been coded into our code. So it's going to be looking for something called themes. And then in the list is where you can actually specify the collections that you want the filter to actually show. So we can call this, um, sorry, we can choose, say, clothing and shoes, for example. Uh, and we can save that. And now if we come back to our, uh, to our page and refresh, we can click this, and it'll show the options of clothing and shoes. And so um, now if I select shoes, it's going to um, it's going to show us the shoes. And it's also going to update that right there. And if we select clothing, it'll show us the clothing and show that right there. Um, same with the product types. Um, we can select, say, t-shirt. And it will show t-shirt right there. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, there's one last thing that we can do here, which is um, we can make this sticky, which it already is by default, but we already have, say, the menu bar and the announcement bar here that's also sticky. And so we can just up adjust the placement of where the anchor point is. And so if we come back to our um, if we come back to our code and we just look for the word top right there. So um, actually shows up in a, yeah, OK. So we have the top for if it's uh, in Safari and right there, if it's uh, anything with a larger screen length, uh, 750, 750 pixels or greater. So uh, what we're going to do is we we can see here both our announcement bar and our menu bar here are sticky. Um, the announcement bar here is 44 pixels. And this one is 44 plus 4, so 48. So we've got 48 plus 44 which is 92. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to update this to 92. Actually, I think this one should be 92 as well. Where is it? Right here. And if we refresh and we scroll down, there we go. So now, uh, actually, it's a little bit too much. 
but you get the idea, right? So now we can we can bring it up just a little bit to close that gap. So maybe it's like 88 pixels. You're gonna have to adjust that based on your theme. So it's it's gonna be a little bit different for for every website. But there we go. So now now we've kind of closed that gap. We've got we've got our sticky announce bar, our sticky menu bar, which I have in a different video um, on how to do that. But also we can adjust our menu bar, uh, or sorry, filters to be sticky on the page as well. So that, um, you know, depending on where they are navigating, they can always go to a new collection or a different product types. So that's pretty much it. Simple customization there to uh, give you a bit of a different feel and look to your collection filters. Um, I think it looks pretty good. It's uh, it's useful for a specific type of use cases if you don't need uh, very intricate filters on your collection page. Um, but yeah, let me know if that helps. If you want to see anything else, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.